As a business owner, working with a virtual assistant can make a massive difference, taking a load of the small tasks off your plate so you can focus on what's really important. However, delegating tasks, chasing outstanding work, asking for updates, prioritisation, etc. can become a full-time job in its own right, and that's where the power of a tool like Asana can come in. I've been using Asana with my team for years, and therefore in this video, I'm going to show you why use Asana when working with a remote virtual assistant, how to add your VA to Asana, using a task board for one-off tasks, and how to use projects for routine tasks. Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy, a property investor based in Maidenhead. I help business owners become more productive through technology. If you're new to Asana or are unfamiliar with how it works, I'd recommend you check out my Asana Basics playlist, link above and in the description, which goes over how to set up an account, using tasks and projects, tips and tricks, and so much more to give you a strong base of knowledge before moving on to some more advanced topics. So first off, why use Asana with a VA? Well, I've got a few reasons I wanted to share with you. The first one is communication. In Asana, you can communicate contextually around a task or a specific piece of work. So rather than, for example, emails where you may have lots of different projects and tasks all grouped together, um, Asana keeps everything all tidy and all related content together. It's the uh, same reason why we shouldn't use things like Slack um, as well, because again, if you've got messages, as more and more people communicate, things get further and further um, up the message chain and it's hard to keep track of everything that you are um, chatting about and trying to discuss. So firstly is communication. The second one is accountability. So uh, in Asana, you can only give one owner to a task. So it makes it really, really clear who is responsible for completing that piece of work and there's no ambiguity about it. Thirdly is delegation. As we're discussing today, it's all about handing work to other people so that you can focus on the most important things either in your personal or business life. And Asana makes it really easy to give work to other people so that they can do it and you can focus on other things. The fourth thing about why you use Asana is collaboration. You can add um, contributors um, to different tasks. So although people may be responsible for completing that piece of work, they can still go and give that input, they can share ideas, and you can work together in uh, one uh, space on a specific subject matter or task um, to make sure you get the best result. So Asana is really good uh, for collaboration. And then lastly, there's how to track uh, how to track work and you do less work about work. So there are less status updates. There's a less chasing. They're less trying to find out where people are because the tool itself enables you to see what people are working on. And I'll get more into that uh, when we talk specifically about how I work with my virtual assistants. So if I just go and share my screen and I'm going to go and show you how I work um, and add uh, team members uh, in Asana. So as you can see, I've got my Asana, test Asana account here um, and I've got a VA team just as an example. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to go and add um, somebody, uh, a virtual assistant or another member to uh, this team, uh, I can do it a couple of ways. Um, like a lot of things uh, in Asana. Um, so the first thing is you can go and here we've got uh, myself, uh, you can just click on one of these circles uh, here on the left hand side uh, and it will pop up saying invite people to Asset Living. Um, so firstly which team um, are we going to add them so that would be the virtual assistant team and then you can also add them to uh, projects as well. Um, so here all you would do two different ways you can either type their email address um, for example, uh, or you can invite with a link and then send that link to them um, for them to go and join. So that's one way you can invite people. Um, but another way is that you can also go up here to the top where it says invite, uh, which actually brings up the same window. Um, so there are a couple of ways. Uh, and lastly, uh, you can also go to VA here, edit team settings. And then you've also got members and you can invite more members down here. So like a lot of things in Asana, you can add people uh, or you can do tasks uh, and actions in many different ways. So that's how you go and add uh, your virtual assistant first. So you want to make sure they've got access to the projects and teams that you want them to. The next thing is how to use a VA task board. Now, um, 
quite often with my virtual assistant, I have a lot of one-off tasks um, for them to complete. Um, and they're very often um, new to the VA, so they won't have done them before. They're quite often time critical, so I need to get them done with a deadline. And they're more prone to uncertainty and errors. Um, so to do that, that's why I use this dedicated board for each VA for these ad hoc tasks. And if you've not used boards before or would like to learn more about how to use them, then do check out my Asana basics video all about boards, uh, link above and in the description. So I've got here on the left hand side a VA example board and it's got various columns which represent various stages that a task goes through. So uh, the first column is the backlog column. Now, these, I love backlog col columns. It's basically an area where you can store ideas. So imagine that we've got a VA and you were doing something else and you thought, oh, that would be a really good um, thing to hand to my VA. I've not got time to write out the process and how it works, but I'm just going to jot down um, this task idea. So let's say a test task idea number one. Um, you can chuck it into the backlog. So your VA knows that they, they're not to do that task. Um, but it's more of a uh, aid memoir to yourself um, about something that you thought of previously uh, and uh, when you have more time you can flesh it out and then when you're ready you can hand it over to them. This is also really good if you want to deprioritize stuff. So imagine that we had in here a slightly um, important task and then um, suddenly you thought mm, that's not as important, there are some other things I'd rather they work on. You can actually just grab this out of the priority column and move it back into the backlog. And the VA basically knows that anything in the backlog, they can have a look at it, but they're not to actually action it. So that's the backlog column. Next up is one of the important ones is the priority column. So any work that you want to give to the VA and you want them to start working on, put it into the priority column. So here I've got task one, uh, it's assigned to um, myself um, and also I've put a deadline on it which is Wednesday and then within the task you can then go and add uh, instructions. So step one and then we've also got step two. And if you'd like to know more about how to work with tasks, I've actually got a video in my Asana Basics series uh, all about tasks, uh, link above and in the description below. So create your task, add it to the priority column. Um, as soon as it's got the uh, VA's name and a deadline on it, uh, they then know that they can start uh, working on it. Another really uh, useful um, way to use this uh, priority column is let's say that we had a, um, a longer uh, task to complete. And let's say that one's on Wednesday and then this one, perhaps we could say that that is going to be uh, due on Friday, for example. And you can actually reorder these. So just by dragging them, if there were tasks that were both due on Wednesday, so they both say Wednesday, just by dragging one above the other, that can give you further um, prioritization order within this priority column. So it's a good little tip. One thing that Asana um, really works at is um, reducing work about work. And a big part of that is sort of status updates and knowing what your team are working on. And that's why I find this example, this um, VA board so powerful, because if my VA gets one of these tasks and they start working on it, all they have to do is grab it and drag it into the working on column. Now, because I've created it, I would actually get a notification in, in my inbox. So I don't have to ask the VA, there's no communication, just through their action of grabbing a task and put it in the working on column, I now know exactly what they're working on. So it's removing the work about work. So um, yeah, as they're working on things, I mean, I generally say that they should only have one or two tasks in here because they can't work on all three things at the same time. Um, so if they've paused it, it can go back into priority or one of the later columns, which I'll share with you in just a second. So the next column is working on. Then we've got the uh, blocked column. So sometimes, as I said earlier, these tasks are um, new to the VA and perhaps they'll start working on it and they'll need some information from me. Maybe they won't understand an instruction. Maybe they can't get the information from somebody else. Um, so they may be a bit stuck. So they can literally just move that task into the blocked column. And then what they would do is they would go and assign it to myself. Um, so there we go. And that would give me a notification so that it's now on my plate to go and unblock it. So as the business owner um, or as the person who's employed the uh, VA, it's my job to unblock any challenges that are stopping those tasks being completed. 
or of course it could be other members of staff etc who are responsible so that's the blocked column uh, then we've got to check so sometimes I need to go and review work done by a VA so they think it's complete so they may say that task four they think is complete uh, so I'll move it into the to check column uh, again they'll just go and change the assignee to myself um, I will then get a notification that it's been moved into to check and that I'm now the um, the owner of that task uh, and then I'll just go and quickly review it I'll normally go and uh, send them an appreciation, for example. So down here, I can just go and send an appreciation. So, yeah, love it. Awesome work. Um, go and mark it as complete as well to say that's all good. And then just move it over into the completed column. So um, it works really, really simply, um, but it's very powerful in that you know exactly um, where tasks are in terms of getting done. You know if anything is stuck that you need to take action on or whether you need to review it. Um, and it gives a great sort of visual representation um, of where work is, if anything's bunched up and what also work is complete. So that's the VA uh, board. Of course, as well as one off tasks, you may have regular tasks um, that your VA may do. Um, so perhaps uh, daily, weekly or less frequently. And for that, I just use a regular tasks board for the VA. Um, in contrast to the ad hoc tasks board um, for regular tasks, the VA will know what to do. And you don't need sort of as regular updates on their status other than perhaps knowing if they're complete, um, which you can find out if you're added as a collaborator. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So let me show you how to set this board up. So I've got here VA regular tasks and you can set this up in different ways. I've just grouped it by daily, weekly, fortnightly um, columns, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but it's entirely up to you how you do it. So for example, maybe one of the daily tasks is check, uh, check email account. So perhaps they do that uh, every day. Um, so we just go and assign that. So that'd be uh, myself um, and then perhaps if they were doing it from tomorrow and here you can put the repeat as well and let's say that that's uh, every day so we just put a daily repeat so you can see all the days all highlighted um, and that's just going to go into their VA regular tasks in the daily column um, and then that gets done every day and appears in my tasks um, for the VA um, so that's daily um, maybe weekly and um, we sort of set up a one-to-one -one with the virtual assistant so maybe they set that up for you um, and i mentioned earlier about a collaborator so you can see down the bottom that i'm added as a collaborator automatically um, because i'm setting up the task but if you wanted to include other people just add them down the bottom they can go and chip in they can comment add their uh, add their feedback to to that task um, so it's a great way to collaborate by adding collaborators down the bottom uh, as well um, so that's just how I use uh, the VA regular tasks um, and then that's the the uh, board is how I do one-off tasks so in this video we've covered all about using Asana with a virtual assistant do let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or tips for how you uh, you work with a VA um, I've got more videos like this coming up every week so please hit the like and subscribe button and smash the notification bell it really helps the channel and it also ensures that you don't miss out on any future videos uh, but that's been all for today thanks so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video